Oh, good morning, gamers. Sorry for the delay on this video. I know it has been a couple of weeks since I talked to you last, and that is admittedly my bad, but uh, Big Daddy Nintendo decided to come take a steaming shit on my motivation and self-control, and as a result, I have been collecting stars in a game that I beat when I was 10. But... Now that I have 120 of these bad boys, I am totally free from the clutches of Super Mario Galaxy, and now I can get to work on some actual programming. I wanted to ease myself back into programming and game development work, so I decided to start by doing a little bit of 3D modeling, which uh, was a pretty good idea, except for the fact that I don't know sh about making models. I tried to make this nice little primitive hut model, and <laughs> it's a piece of <laughs> but it's my beautiful little piece of shit, so I love it very much. But I needed to move on. I can't spend hours and hours and hours on 3D models that I'm just going to replace in the end anyways. There's not a chance that this is the final product. So uh, I'll just uh, get this into my game engine and things will be all good. And speaking of getting it into my game engine... Uh, I didn't have a way to import colors from Blender, so I just need to write myself a nice little material import chunk of code, and, uh, bada bing, bada boom, my piece of shit was in my game engine. So with that done, I was pretty much back up to speed with, uh, game development, 3D modeling, and programming, so I could move on back to my favorite thing in the world, which is collision detection. This time around, I am implementing an oriented bounding box system. Now, if you don't know what an oriented bounding box is, don't worry, I didn't either. So I'll explain it really, really quickly. According to Wikipedia, an oriented bounding box is a bounding volume that is aligned with an object's local axes instead of the world axes. So this just means that when I rotate objects, the bounding boxes that I'm using currently will rotate with them and it will make collision detection way more accurate and way easier to use for different problems like pathfinding or ray casting or anything else like that. So it should be a much better system. So with a little bit more fancy linear algebra that I definitely understand and didn't take off of Stack Overflow, the bounding boxes work perfectly with each other first try, like things that I program always do. So now I can move on to the part of programming a city builder game that I have been avoiding as much as I avoid horror games. Oh, the noise. Oh, I'm dead. F dude. F uh, sh I can't take this. Dude, I hate this game. It's time for pathfinding, baby. I did not want to do pathfinding whatsoever. So I figured, in my very naive brain state at the time, what better way to do pathfinding than to just knock it out in one night and not sleep until it's done. Now there are a couple problems with this. One, my brain doesn't work very well when I've been programming for 18 hours straight. Two, pathfinding is a really important thing that needs to be done very well, and three, it's not easy to implement at all. But mama didn't raise no bitch. So uh, I sat down, got some planning done, and got to work on my pathfinding system. So here's a basic rundown of the pathfinding system that I came up with. And pardon me, we're gonna get a little technical here for a second. Uh, but we'll come out of the other side of this just dandy, okay? Trust me. We define a set of objects in the world that are either blocking or non-blocking. If an object is blocking, that means that a entity cannot walk through it. Then we take an entity and we take its start location and its target location and we cast a ray between them. Any object that is blocking that ray will be added to a set of objects that the entity has to pathfind around. To pathfind around these objects, I basically define a set of nodes that 
describe how you would walk around that object. Then I add those nodes to a navigation map, which I then run a pathfinding algorithm on to find the final path that the entity will take. The pathfinding algorithm of choice for me this time around is the A star algorithm. It's pretty fast and it works pretty dang well for what it needs to do. It's a pretty straightforward system, but like all data structure problems, there are always a number of bugs that cause headaches. But about 20 hours later, I finally had a pretty nice working prototype that I could run some pathfinding tests on. Obviously, there are a number of bugs that are still remaining, but after programming for about 20 hours to get this working just in a basic form, I really didn't want to work on those bugs. But yeah, that's a pathfinding prototype pretty much done and dusted. I'll leave you with this monstrosity of a code base, and you can decide whether I am a genius or an absolute buffoon of a programmer. And uh, that'll pretty much do it for this video. I highly recommend that you hit the subscribe button down there. A, it helps me out a lot. And B, I have a cool video coming out hopefully in the near future that's a little bit different than anything I've done before. And I can't wait to share it with you all. If you really enjoyed the video, I would love it if you gave it a thumbs up. Any support, whether it be likes, comments, even dislikes, they all help me out a lot. But thank you very much for watching. Hopefully I'll have my next video out before another month passes. You never know with these things. Sometimes they take a little longer than you expect. But uh, we will see you very soon. Bye.